my name is Sebastian and in this video I want to talk about what is one of my favorite uh, features in Quarkus that is panache especially how to do persistence with Hibernate ORM panache. So panache has been around for quite a while in Quarkus and probably you have seen it maybe you're not aware of it maybe you're not aware of all of the features or what is just nice in projects there and what I want to show you just to start it off real quick is a playground project and some well coffee shop uh, example that just for now stores something which are my coffee entities in a map so just in memory and we're gonna change that to implement this together for a relational database. So how does this work? Let's build this real quick, the application. It is a Quarkus application in version three that we can build using Maven, for example, and then I can start it up in the regular way, in the JVM way, using using Java, that's uh, jar, target, target Quarkus app, Quarkus run, and then it, it runs and we can go to our endpoint, for example, coffees, and then ask for some coffees that's provided via JSON. And then we can say, well, please create some, uh, some coffee here. For example, this type that is required espresso. And then it says, okay, just created uh, some coffee here in, in our list. So that's basically that. So very simple REST endpoint. But now we would like to persist that to a relational database. How to do this? So you can have a look at the Quarkus guides and then you will see already for the Hibernate ORM with Panache that there are different solutions. This I will talk about my um, point of view or my experience in a different video. Uh, we will using this repository pattern and of course JPA entities and implement this. So basically we have our entities here and this is just, well, a Java class that now is still uh, kept in this in memory map. And now we're going to change this for persistence. So first of all, it's very nice to see or very uh, easy to note that if you use Hibernate or Mpanache, all of your Hibernate and known JPA stuff will still work. So that means even if you're migrating some code uh, that uh, used to be a uh, plain J uh, J uh, JPA and Hibernate code, that still works with Panache. So you don't have to do any changes. You can just have it straight away in all in the same way how you did it all these years. You don't have to change anything. But let's include something here. So I'm going to include the dependency for uh, the Quarkus Hibernate ORM Panache, that's that. In of course the same version as our Quarkus project. And also what it does, it includes this dependency. I also need some database driver. So this will be Quarkus um, JDBC for Postgres. I will use a Postgres database and I'll include these two dependencies here. And then what I can do, I can just include this. Okay, so now you might have seen a previous video that I did how to init databases in Quarkus and then you might know if I now use the development mode for my Quarkus project, it will already come with these dev services and then start a, um, start a Postgres database for me if I didn't define one. So that's kind of cool. And now we can have a look at that that will actually run here as a Docker container. My Postgres database it just has been uh, started up. And that's kind of helpful, but now I don't want this. I want to, in fact, define my own database that for now I use um, using localhost. So basically I say the data source will be Postgres uh, point to JDBC URL. This has still nothing to do with a panache. This is just pl uh, the plain Quarkus data source uh, mechanisms and plain Hibernate here. So this is just how to connect to that uh, database. And then of course I need to run it. I could say run my database here just as a Docker container real quick using the script and then it should run. And then it should connect to it. Once I have the Quarkus dev mode, now it should not use the dev services, start up a little bit faster and just um, do this there. Okay, now there's nothing included in persistence yet in my project. Let's uh, change this. So how would you usually do this? Well, you would include some JPA entity. So this is just the same. I define this coffee as an entity. Note that I keep my Quarkus uh, still running in the background. I can say this should be a table for some nice table name, for example, coffee or coffee order, something like this then you probably know for JPA entity here notes that I already used a new namespace because of Quarkus 3. 
um, a JPA entity needs an ID. So this would be the ID as let's say a generated value. The ID string is fine. I can have these fields uh, public, why not? And then that should already be sufficient. Okay, now how to use this, how to persist this entity, there are different ways. You could, of course, let's refactor this real quick. I throw away the hash map and I fix this in a second. You could, of course, use some sort of uh, entity manager. Here you see that this is, um, this would now be in a new one, Jakarta. I haven't updated my, my IDE shortcut yet. You could have an um, entity manager. That's, uh, that, of course, uh, works. Persistent context entity manager, entity manager. So this still works. You can use that plain JPA. Why not? But however, I would um, I would recommend to use now the repository pattern, and I will um, compare a few different approaches in a later video that I call coffee repository. And what it does, this will be a bean application scoped a bean for also. You see that I need to update these IDE uh, patterns. Um, this will be an application scoped bean and it will um, implement Panache repository or Panache repository base. So Panache repository, for example, says this will be a repository for a specific entity. The entity will be coffee, now my class. Or this already assumes that this entity has an ID of type long. That's not the case for us. We have an UUID, if you remember here, that's type UUID, which is why we use Panache repository base uh, for which we can change the ID type, which you see here. So we can say this ID type should actually be UUID. All right, and that's already sufficient. And then what we can do, of course, here we can add inject our coffee repository. Okay, now my, it's a little bit useless if I uh, have to change this every time. Repository, I have to update this. And now what I do, basically the following. Let's start with the get coffee. The repository already includes, as you can see here, some default methods that are very handy and that typically you need. Note that this is quite better or quite, you know, more convenient than the entity manager. Um, especially for the more querying method. So find by ID, that's kind of straightforward. But especially if we say, how would we get all of the coffees? Well, there are different ways. For example, list that already returns a list. We could also say, well, find, or we could uh, query something for a stream. There are different um, ways that give us already different return types, depending on what we need. And in our project, this is really handy and much easier to, to say, okay, entity manager, we have to define a named query or native query or whatnot, and then get the re, um, correct result type and things like that. You've probably seen this. This is, of course, now much easier. Okay, then how to add the coffee? Uh, let's try this out. We have a coffee entity uh, here, and then the repository says, okay, uh, just persist that. Okay, coffee. And then, then the persist, if we read into the um, into the documentation, it persists the given entity if it's not already persisted, and then it will be persisted, which for us means, okay, then it should be a managed entity, and then also the ID should be set. So then we don't need this anymore, and we can just say, okay, persisted, and then the ID should be present, which is uh, required for the um, REST resource. Okay, let's try this out, if this works. I still have my application running. I could manually restart it or just have another uh, invocation of a curl and say, okay, now I would like to order some coffee again. And now, well, this didn't work. If you paid attention, you probably are already smiling and you know why. Here it even tells, uh, tells it to us. That's a quite common mistake. I forgot something. Transaction is not active. Consider adding a transactional to your method. Yes, of course, it even nicely tells us what might be a solution. If I have a transactional method, namely this one to add coffee, of course, I would need to add a transactional to this method or in our case, actually to all of uh, the methods here for yes, Jakarta transactional, add transactional for this, and then this should work. Let's try this again. 
okay perfect now we have 201 created our coffee it also got the id everything seems to work here we can query them and then we see okay that's now the coffee in the system let's query the individual coffee shows us the type espresso okay that seems to work now let's also have a look uh, real quick in, in the database because why not we can say okay connect to our database uh, using this Postgres user and see that we have our coffee orders table okay great I can have a look into it and there of course is my coffee so that means if I stop my application and restart it again of course now depending on the setting that we had in our properties the database generation if I say something like drop and create of course then everything is gone but now it says only create it will give us a warning that this table already exists okay that's fine and now it should still be there and our endpoint should still give us the coffee order so now this is persisted okay so that's uh, kind of cool this was quite quick to include now what does this repository do, uh, do for us and this is kind of helpful um, right now we just injected this class and used the mechanism from this panache repository base and that's already kind of convenient especially if we compare it to an entity manager but there is more we can also include our own methods for example if we would like to say well i would like to have some sp a more specific method here not just list all but something domain specific like for example list all list all coffees if i say i have something like um, a list of my coffee and then i say not just list all but list all espressos something like this something domain specific i can do this and then i can implement the persistence querying logic inside here which is quite nice from a well code quality or art, uh, architectural perspective because i'm not cluttering that specific code that lower level implementation detail code into my use case class here it's literally a delegate that i can use for it which is very well very logical and very handy and i can say okay list and now not list all but list for a specific you know query i can include a sub query i can i can even inject uh, or get the entity manager here and uh, can do whatever i want so if you have existing code don't worry that also will work i can say get the entity manager there you have your entity manager you could do whatever you like this also will still work if you have existing code here for example here i could say okay i want all of the orders that have type espresso in my case so type espresso that is a very basic quer query just for an example and then what i will do let's invoke this here real quick i say forget a coffees instead of all of the coffees list all espressos because now we have this particular dependency that we're using from here and now you see that this is already you know not much nicer to read because our domain specific code is now the lower level uh, code is now in here in this class i can change this I can say okay my coffee still gives me this yes of course let's get um, another cappuccino in the system and one more espresso which now I should have three coffees in the system but my endpoint should give me two because it's using this method if I change that method back to list really all coffees then it should give me all three again so you see that this can be helpful especially for the more domain specific methods to include them in a way that makes our code still more readable because now the lower level details are hidden or are delegated to this particular repository which is one um, reason why i like this panache repository uh, approach a lot you can have a look at the guides. I will also follow up with another video where um, I make some comparison, whether it's you, to use the more, uh, well, more well-known or more default active record uh, pattern and what that means. But in general, this was just a short introduction how to use um, persistence with Hibernate or M Panache. Why I think it's just a really nice addition to the Quarkus world and how to persist our entities in an effective way. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like. I also have a video course available on effective Quarkus development. So link down below, you can check this out. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.